The third emotional regulation strategy is attentional deployment. It's just a fancy way of saying, focus on what you want to pay attention to and not focusing on what you don't want to pay attention to. Mm. I made the best coffee. There are three types of attentional deployment strategies. The first type is distraction. It's exactly what it sounds like. Ignoring some parts and paying attention to other parts. If you're having a conversation with a passive aggressive person and you have to get through this conversation, maybe you ignore the undertones and you just pay attention to the information that's given to you. Attentional deployment can be very helpful in managing your emotions so you don't, you know, go left. You don't want things to go left. This is just an option. But this is a way that you can just focus on what you need to focus on and ignore other parts. Another example where you can use attentional deployment is co-parenting. Attentional deployment can be a very powerful tool. Again, this is something you have to practice. This is just telling you that you have options. I know some of you are already using a few of these strategies, but it's just a reminder that you have already are putting some of these strategies in place, but you just don't give yourself credit for it. Sometimes we just become overwhelmed for whatever reason, and we convince ourselves that we don't have options, but we do. You're not hopeless. The second type of attentional deployment is called rumination. And you've probably heard of that if you've ever worked in any type of mental health clinical setting. Rumination is when you think about something negative and you just constantly think about it over and over and over again. Now, in most cases, this will be unhealthy. We do not suggest rumination because it can kind of take over your emotions and trigger some depressive feelings. But sometimes ruminating on positive thoughts can help trigger, you know, an increase in your uh, mood. A popular way that people use rumination to their advantage is if someone is getting ready for a sporting event and they're like, we lost last year. I did not like the way I felt. It can be a slippery slope. You're, you're constantly thinking about what went wrong. But there are times where rumination can work in regulating your emotions. You're trying to get hyped up. You're trying to remember, you know, what's the goal and what happened the last time. A way you can ruminate on positive emotions is thinking about the good times, thinking about uh, maybe um, getting through some type of grief, like setting a time to think about good times and fun times you had with a person you lost. Or if you're going through a breakup. Maybe you can think about some of the good times you had and that it wasn't all bad. So rumination is not all bad, but you got to be careful about what you ruminate on. The last type of attentional deployment is mindfulness. It's the practice of being in the moment, focusing on where you are in the here and now. A type of mindfulness practice is meditation, yoga exercising, deep breathing. It's a way to kind of calm yourself and center yourself and just focus on what's going on right now. Instead of being in the past, I center myself and come to the future. I mean, <laughs> not the future. I center myself and focus on the moment, the here and now. We finished number three, attentional deployment. It's shifting what you focus on in order to manage the emotion. The fourth emotional regulation strategy is cognitive change. Changing the way you think in order to change the way you feel. Now, this strategy may be more difficult for people who have a traumatic brain injury, who have some cognitive issues, but it can still be used. And for the most part, if there's no issues with the cognitive functioning, you can definitely work on the skill of changing the way you think in order to change the way you feel. So there are four types of cognitive change strategies. The first type is self-efficacy appraisal, aka known as, can I handle this? Now, this involves you really taking a look at the situation like, hmm, can I really deal with this right now? Am I emotionally equipped? Hmm. It's you really just looking at yourself and saying, is this something I can handle? An example of this would be maybe if you're in a relationship, something happens where you don't accept it. Some boundaries have been crossed. You might need to sit down and really think about, can I accept this? You are looking inward and trying to figure out, can I handle this? These strategies are going to require you to be emotionally honest with yourself. The second cognitive change strategy is challenge and threat appraisal. This involves you figuring out what are my barriers? What are the problems? What is the situation and what could possibly trigger me? And what would be my emotional reaction? Third type of cognitive change strategy is positive reappraisal. That just means looking at the bright side, finding the positive in a situation. Maybe something negative happened or something that's affecting you in an emotional and mental way. 
Reappraising the situation is a way you manage your emotions. What if you're in a situation where you can't change it? For example, maybe you went on a trip and you can't leave for a week. If you definitely can't leave for a week, you got to start to figure out how you can find a positive, uh, uh, how you can change the way you think. And again, this is not easy stuff. Sometimes emotional burdens can be so heavy. You're like, oh my God, I just feel hopeless. But as you practice and you get used to it and you, you intentionally think about the choices and the options you have, it gets much easier. This strategy might be used when you can't modify the situation or avoid the situation. You might just be in it. You don't have another option. So you start to look at it like, okay, I need to look at the bright side in this. The last cognitive change strategy type is acceptance. This can be used in situations where you can't modify it. You can't avoid it. You can't focus your attention on something different. It's like it is what it is situation. And these type of situations can be very painful and uncomfortable. Sometimes you just have to accept what it is. A good example of this is when people get medical diagnosis. Um, they go through a period where they might be in denial. They may be angry. They, be, they might be hurt. And then towards the end, as they start to heal and focus on getting better, they go through a stage of acceptance. Grief is like that too. That's an example. There's a stage of grief where the person finally accepts that they've experienced a loss. We finished the third type of emotional regulation strategy, cognitive change, which is changing the way you think. There are four types of cognitive change strategy. Self-efficacy appraisal, which involves you asking yourself, what can I handle? Can I handle the situation? Challenging threat appraisals, which is you looking at the barriers. What are your threats? What could possibly get in the way of you managing your emotions? Positive reappraisal, which is looking at the situation from a positive perspective, looking at the bright side, trying to find benefits of a situation that may be unhelpful or hurtful. And lastly, acceptance. That's, that's the, it is what it is. It's when you don't have any other choice but to accept the situation. All right, let's go to the fifth strategy. The next emotional regulation strategy is response modulation. This happens late in the emotional response process, meaning by now you've already started to develop some emotional response to whatever triggered the emotion. There are four types of response modulation strategies. One is helpful, the other three not so helpful. We mentioned the unhelpful response modulation strategies because we need to know what it looks like when we have unhelpful responses in the process when we are experiencing these emotions. The first type of response modulation is emotion sharing. So this happens when you have to vent or if you see an incident and you automatically have to call somebody and say, I have to tell you this. I really have to get this off my chest. I have to vent to somebody. This is one of the helpful response modulation practices i.e. therapy that is why it's so therapeutic because you just have a space to just talk about what you have going on emotion sharing is connected to lower mental health struggles the second type of response modulation is verbal or physical aggression now this is one of the unhelpful responses to emotion this is the type that you want to refrain from because anytime you are not aware of your emotions and your triggers and how you respond and when you are not aware that you have these options a person might act out and start to engage in physical or verbal aggression the third type of response modulation is substance use or substance abuse Someone who uses a substance to manage an emotional response. Maybe you had a stressful day and you come home and drink a glass of wine. That is substance use. Substance abuse is when you use a substance in a harmful way and you become addicted and there's an addictive nature to how you're using the substance and it causes issue in your life and your daily functioning. The last type of response modulation is expressive suppression, meaning suppressing the emotions, denying the emotion. These are highly correlated and highly connected to the development of mental health disorders. If you get into the habit of suppressing difficult emotions like anger, sadness, frustration, it's going to be very hard for you to acknowledge the happier emotions. 